Yo, what's going on? My name is Gustavo Bajoza and welcome to my studio. So I just moved into a new studio. This whole area will be the workshop and in the back we're gonna have my little studio area where we 3D print and design things. Um, I'm working on getting some double doors so that's this whole situation here. Um, Everything is fucked. <laughs> These are the double doors. Um, the price of double doors have doubled apparently the past year. So I had to borrow money from my dead uncle for that. So one of the cool things about my studio is that I'm extremely organized as you can tell. I moved in here literally yesterday. So everything is a little bit, you know, not quite at home yet. Um, however, over here I have my 3D printers. So I use this a lot to make prototypes and 3D, 3D molds for things. This table is where I painted my purpose paintings. This is my resin printer. I make a bunch of little cool little prints. Actually, let me show you something. I printed this little baby, a 124 scale model that I made in lead up for my exhibition. Nothing to see here. Yeah. <laughs> so these are 3D prints that I do on this on these resin printers just because they allow for a lot of detail and stuff. So I'll I'll um, sculpt these in in VR and then I'll print them um, at various different scales for me to understand the proportions and stuff. These probably take a few hours, like six to twelve hours. Let's see. Let's just start going through boxes and see what we have. Oh, this is the floor plan for the gallery. Kid Super? Yep, Kid Super Gallery. These are little mini crates that, these were some prototypes. So the mini chairs, this is a one six scale model of my green slime chair. That was the first chair I ever made. It's an addition of 100 with 10 artist proofs. And then it comes packaged in a little baby crate. Boom. This is the first prototype of a collaboration that I did with this brand by my friend Keith called Advisory. I did a little something for his runway show using these Sambas. Let's see what's in these. Oh, it's a mask made specifically to fit my face. So the idea for this was just to make, you know, Cyclops masks that fit to my face. But for its next life, I really want to make a ski goggle. I think that'd be pretty sick, right? For now, it lives in the box. Everything is in the box. Look at this plant. Beautiful. There's, there's not even anything to say. Just look at it. It's beautiful. I need more plants. We need more green in the city. That's my next project. How do we bring more green to New York City. Like real green, for real. <laughs> so this is the beginning of a sculpture called Venom. And I'm gonna build out this black more. It's part of my Abomination series where the green slime chair, the blue slime chair was born. And I'm just gonna build it out more and it's probably gonna be like elevated like this. And just, it's gonna, the idea is for it to look like it's being consumed by like black venom. This is a chair called um, um, American Fever. It's kind of just, you know, poking fun at the things that we're all so obsessed about. It's an addition of 50 and 14 artist proofs. It's, all of it is referencing different things about America. Right. So like obviously 50 states, 14 um, different territories, and then you know, the association with money and evil and all that stuff. So the price is $666. Let's see. Oh, Rodrigo Andrade, a Brazilian painter. I recently found out about his work last year on my trip to Brazil. It's where I'm from. And he makes these incredible landscape paintings. Radical Italian design. Huge reference for me. Gaetano Pesci, Studio 65. I don't know what's going on, but it makes me feel something. You know? I don't know. But I feel, I feel him. 
Erin Worm. One Minute Forever. MC Escher. I love this guy. Illusions and patterns and just incredible, incredible illustrations. Ask me everything you want to know. Where are you from and how long have you lived in New York? I was born in, I was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I moved to America when I was very young. So I grew up mostly in the Northeast. And I've been in New York for two years. I love New York. The thing about New York, you know, the, so many people come to New York to, to make it happen, to chase their dreams. And that energy is just everywhere. You know, what would I tell a high school kid who's about to graduate and consider in college? I think it's, that's difficult to answer because it really depends on you and your circumstances. For me, going to college absolutely changed my life. It opened up the world to me. You know, I had never gone to an art museum. I had never gone to an art gallery until I got to college. I had never met somebody who was paying their bills from art until I got to college. I never had access to a wood shop and to be able to actually like make 3D ideas until I got to college. Um, I didn't really like the college experience, to be honest. I struggled a lot with it, but it, I can't deny that it changed my life. So it's, it's hard for me to tell, tell other people like the advice on it because a lot of the most successful creatives that I know didn't go to college or they didn't study what they're like successful in, you know? So I think that like if you're just graduating high school, you just need to think about and what you want, what you like to do and explore those things. And, you know, it's, it's important to be honest about <laughs> if you're good at what you like to do. Because if you're not good at what you like to do, but you really like it, maybe you can improve over time. I never applied to a design job when I left school because I felt like I wanted the freedom to just create whatever the fuck I wanted. And I had a feeling that if I got a design job, designing nine to five, once six o'clock came around, I wouldn't have like, the willpower to be creative. So I got, I got just a random job that would just pay my rent. And then I, that, the whole work day, I just couldn't wait to get home and work on my art and design. And so, and I would do that in every single weekend and every night until I fell asleep. So yeah, I just got a job that would pay the bills. And then I would, that gave me the freedom to not have to make money from my art, you know, because I think if you're so worried about, I have to make money, I have to make money, it puts a lot of pressure on what you're creating, I think. So by focusing on just making whatever I wanted, from there I started finding ways to make money with it. But the money wasn't the priority in the beginning. Job. And it took me three months of working nights and weekends to make one chair. But once I finished it, it was my first chair that I had ever made. And I felt like I had created something that like, was telling a story that I wanted to tell. And I had zero pressure to make money from it. I had no one telling me what to do. I didn't really have an ideal client. I just wanted to make something with my hands and see it exist in the world. I mean, I want to know more about like Cologne, but I'm more interested in like what it was like bringing your work into like a gallery space like that and like how that felt. We're, like we've just collaborated on a bunch of different projects and he's building, you know, a new space in Williamsburg, a 10,000 square foot like creative factory. And the first place that was finished was the gallery. And so I just texted him and I was like, yo, can I do a show in the gallery? And he just responded in all caps, yes. So I was like, I didn't really have a show. I had No one had asked me to be in any shows for New York Design Week or Freeze. So one of the things I really admire about Colin is, you know, he does everything independently. And I was just like, okay, let's just do this ourselves. And he was like, let's do it.